have a motion to approve the minutes of August 25th, 2020. Council Member Peck. So moved. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Um, assuming there's no further debate, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. All right, uh, uh, that, uh, the motion passes unanimously. Um, any agenda revision, submission of documents, or motions direct the city manager to add agenda items to future agendas? Councilmember Peck. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bagley. Actually, it's a question, and if it's, uh, there may not be a motion. So um, at a previous meeting, Harold, we uh, directed staff to put on a future agenda the amended air quality contract. And I'm wondering if that has been assigned to an agenda yet. Uh, I know we're okay. working on the amendment and we're looking at either uh, the second meeting in September or first meeting in October. Hey, this is the number of Boulder County residents newly reporting as tested positive um, as of September 8th. And part of the reason why I wanted to show you this is that we have two fairly significant, well, not fairly, significant spikes related to the number of cases in Boulder County. This is um, an interesting chart. I mean, so again, um, what you're seeing is that growth in the 20 to 29 year old category. The good news that we're starting to see um, is if you look at this, um, all of them tend to be in green. Uh, the ICU beds is still in yellow. Um, and remember the available med surge beds, and again, this is related to um, elective procedures and that have been going on and, and things beyond COVID. And we had been a little further in the red, we're right on the line. Earlier today, before the change in numbers, it was actually in the, in the yellow. Though, is it fair to assume that those spikes that we see, uh, that we attribute to the university, because it's in Boulder County, um, would, would be a factor in keeping or prohibiting the count of the county from from qualifying in, among or meeting the seven standards and that's one of the conversations that i want to have with have with um, the county health department is to understand that because what's different about this is because of the so the wastewater testing is a bit of a nexus in terms of then they're testing i guess dormitories and, and other areas um, so the difference in this is it's not like they're just seeing widespread um, in the community, and so it, they are understanding where it's coming from. Oh. So what I- oh, Sorry, Councilor yeah, Rebecca? Exactly. It's okay. <laughs> so um, as we watch this nationwide and, and look at the spike, a lot of them nationally are coming from uh, universities and the opening of colleges. Um, I've also heard uh, the discussion that sending these, grad, these uh, students home is also going to add to a problem that they are carrying this back. So my question is, has the university or the county thought about uh, doing a quarantine dorm? Hey, um, tomorrow I have, um, every Wednesday, I have a conversation with uh, the, the other uh, managers within Boulder County and Jane's on that conversation. So that was going to be one of my questions for doing it. Um, and it, it, you know, multiple schools are doing different things. Exactly. Some are canceling, some are quarantining. And so, one of my uh, amazing teammates just said, CU does have dorms set up for quarantine um, I, and isolation. So Marika, just so you all know, Marika is the one that just sent me this. Marika is on the GIST team. Okay. And so she's interacting with, with them on a much regular, on a regular basis. Councilmember Christensen. Um, I would like to point out that CU also has its own hospital where I spent my winter break one year. <laughs> uh, so they are well equipped to, to take care of it. I hope they do a good job. Let's go ahead and move on to first call public invited to be heard. Let's go ahead and take. All right. uh, and thanks for your time tonight. I'm calling to ask council to reconsider their recent motion vote on short term rentals, um, specifically the one that eliminates the ability for Longmont residents to rent out one investment property. Uh, in 2018, I came before the council twice to plead my case regarding owning a second home and being able to rent on a short term basis. 
as soon as your ruling became law, we immediately went to the city. We paid and were issued the third STR permit and then applied and were granted a sales tax license. Since then, we have paid the city over $3,500 in sales and lodging taxes. And it has come to my attention that you would like to revisit this ruling and if possible, make amends to it, potentially eliminating the opportunity to second home by a resident for short-term rental income. I'm calling in to speak to item 9C, updating the development code to include protections of riparian area, areas, habitat, and species. Two years ago, council approved the first set of major updates to Longmont's LDC in 17 years. At that time, council directed staff to include several riparian protection amendments and to develop a sustainability evaluation tool. As a result, this section of the updates was delayed. The wildlife management plan was completed last fall and has informed the LDC. This ordinance is ready to go and will help protect riparian areas, wetlands, streams, creeks, open space, and the wildlife that depends on all these. Desperately needed are resources for education, advocacy, and enforcement to protect these places now. Several of us spoke to you in person at the council meeting in February on the dangers of microwave radiation, the same radiation that smart meters emanate 24-7. At that time, to my recall, we brought each of you a copy of a white paper from 2012, authored by Dr. Timothy Shackley in collaboration with the National Institute for Science, Law, and Public Policy called Getting Smarter About the Smart Grid. As such, he is uniquely qualified to have formulated this exceptional and game-changing critical analysis, getting smarter about the smart grid. I'm, in, I'm calling in to voice our concerns on the amount of traffic and the unsafe speed of, the, of traffic coming to our neighborhood on South Kaufman Street. We have gotten accustomed, accustomed to the slight increase in traffic when Prospect was developed, but now it has become like a speedway through our neighbor, neighborhood because it is wide and it is downhill. With the light and the collector street designation, it has become unsafe and I have actually experienced where we have motion, motioned with our hands to, uh, to slow drivers down uh, because of the kids in the neighborhood and, and drivers have actually uh, sped up. We as residents at Southmore Park are asking that there is some consideration in how our neighborhood and our lives are now being impacted. Mayor Bagley and council members, I hope you got a chance to read my comments I sent you about the updated riparian code and the 2021 budget. Please implement my recommendations and address specific issues I brought up in my comments. I would also like to re reiterate the importance of filling the environmental sustainability planner position. Please hire the environmental planner as soon as possible and approve the position for 2021. And finally, Longmont needs more park rangers. Let's not go through another year where we have to, where we don't have enough rangers to protect the city's natural resources and to handle the large influx of people into our parks, greenways, and open space. Thank you so much, bye. Yeah. As I'm starting the application process for my short-term rental, I was appalled to learn that this council is considering taking away the rights of property owners by limiting and preventing short-term rentals. This so-called policy consideration seems like such a knee-jerk, poorly thought out, whimsical reaction that I can't believe it's even being given the time of day. We were having a hard time to find an Airbnb to spend the time in Colorado. so. We found a beautiful place in Longmont, beautiful house, and um, that gave us the opportunity uh, for my family and I to uh, get to know the area. We, we fall in love with uh, Longmont. So um, I gotta say that you guys have a great community and this is the main reason of my call. So just to let you know the importance, important how important it is for us as a family that you guys provide this kind of service. There is no way that living in a hotel will enjoy as much as we did in an Airbnb.
Richardson. Uh, I would like to pull uh, 9C for a discussion and 9H just for a comment. All right. Can we have a motion? All right, I'm going to actually move the consent agenda less C and H. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. All right. Uh, the, uh, the motion cast passes unanimously. All right, let's go ahead with uh, item 10A, ordinance 2020-34, a bill for an ordinance amending section 4.16.010 of the Loma Municipal Code on allowable investments. Are there any questions from council? Right, yeah, I, I'm a little uncomfortable with um, the fact that we are taking, we are adding as good investments, uh, municipal bonds and mortgage-backed securities, which were two of the things that, you know, which under good circumstances um, would be fine. However, you know, they have proven to be uh, very, both of them have proven to be very problematic in times of financial meltdowns. We're and, pretty uh, confident we, we are in, invested in uh, AAA type investments when it comes to these securities that are mortgage backed through federal instrumentalities. Uh, as far as the municipal bonds go, again, we would only be looking at the highly rated municipal bonds. Um, so we have those built into that investment policy Beyond, that you, yeah. we have those uh, limits on, on how high those need to be graded. So we don't get into any junk type bonds or junk documents that, um, that would be more of a high risk to the to city. Okay, thanks, Jim. I, uh, Can we have you know, a motion regarding Ordinance 2020-34? All right, Dr. Waters? Uh, I'll move. I just, not, we just, when you put, bring that screen up, I can't, thank you. I'll move approval of Ordinance 2020-34. First move. Second. All right, it's been moved by Dr. Waters and seconded by Councilmember Hidalgo, actually, Hidalgo Faring, was that you? Okay, seconded by Councilmember Hidalgo Faring. Um, seeing no further comment or discussion, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, ordinance 2020-34 passes uh, unanimously. Can we have a motion? Councilmember Christensen? Uh, <clears throat> I move um, um, 0-2020-34-B. Uh, I think, I think, uh, I, okay, I'll second that. I'll re, I'll take the motion as a motion to approve the amended council rules of procedure, specifically rule 27 regarding boards second. or item 10B. Second. All right, okay. It's been moved by Councilor Christensen. It's been seconded by Dr. Waters. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. I would move resolution 2020 92. Second. All right. Councilmember Christensen made a motion. It was seconded by Councilmember Martin. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right. Resolution 2020 92 passes unanimously. All right. Polly, let's go ahead and address Ordinance 2020 37. There is a motion to pass Ordinance 2020 37 as previously amended and was seconded by Councilmember Martin. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, ordinance 2020-37 passes unanimously. Um, let's go ahead and move on to general business items. Um, public hearing regarding Longmont Fairgrounds Marketplace Business Improvement District. Um, specifically ordinance 2020-38. It's a bill for an ordinance organizing the LFM Business Improvement District, providing for an election of the board of directors of the district and approving the 2020-2021 operating plan and budget for the district. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for September 22nd, 2020. Um, the term extraordinary, that there's an extraordinary 
expense to do what has to be done. Uh, and, I, and I read in the enclosure about the infrastructure work that has to be done, the connector road, et cetera. But, but in, this, in this application, as I raised the same question when we approved the Metro District, the only one we've approved, what's the standard or criteria for extraordinary expense? I, um, I could ask Carolyn White to weigh in as to what her understanding of w what would constitute uh, some of the requirements of the operating plan, because again, they operate. So the question isn't whether you think it's extraordinary or not, it's whether you think it's met the criteria in the state statute. And I can go through some of what those are if you would like, um, or you could ask the applicant to explain what they meant by extraordinary. That's not a legal criterion. Okay, I'll ask the applicant. Uh, I, I didn't use the term. That I'd have to go back and it, maybe it was a council communication or in their in their actual application. But that's all right. Do we have a motion pertaining to Ordinance 2020-38? Uh, I would move Ordinance 2020-38. I'll second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. All right, the ordinance carries six to one with Councilmember Christensen opposed. Jim, go ahead and start this movie. All right, Mayor Bagley, members of Council, Jim Golden. Chief Financial Officer. So this is the first of our 2021 budget presentations this evening. Council, Joanne Zias, Chief Human Resources Officer. I would like to take a few minutes tonight just to speak to you about employee compensation and our budget recommendations in light of the current labor market outlawness. So the data that you're looking at there for Colorado is July data. The data that you're looking at there for June is the counties. Um, the compensation is no different in this environment. It is an uncertain environment. We do typically create compensation plans from projections. Those turnover, I wanted to give a little bit of information. Even though the market has a pretty high unemployment rate, we do have a relatively low turnover rate within the city. It is still, so this is our projection for retirement eligibility. It's a little bit small, but what it's showing is that we have over the next two years, we will have about 264 of our employees or about a quarter of our employees who are eligible to retire. Many of you have probably seen this slide before. Um, this is our compensation philosophy. And so this is what we're working towards. And what we always say is that we wanna provide prevailing market rates. We do. So essentially for 2021 to start, we are not making any market adjustment for employees. We're just looking to keep those salary ranges where they are. We have made some space in the budget to move employees who were under their market salary towards that market salary. So if they're below that rate, they can move towards it. But the, um, just a little bit of notes in terms of uh, the future compensation direct direction. What we're hoping is that as we have the ability that we will go ahead and start to move towards that pay target. I don't know that that's gonna happen in the near future, but we do wanna keep that on there as a goal. It's been something that has been a goal. The mayor and the, the mayor pro tem are both on the old higher pension boards. Um, the, those are defined benefit plans, and they have an annual actuarial um, review performed, performed on them each year. I'm going to talk about the general employee's retirement plan, and uh, it's also a defined benefit plan. Uh, the uh, GERP plan is, has, been, has had a history traditionally of being fully funded. In 2016, the GERP board made a change to our funding policy to amortize the liability over a closed 30-year period. So it was previously over an open period, which continued to revolve. So under a closed period, we have a target. We move towards that target to reach fully funded over that. So that period will be 26 years from January 1st, 2019. So another 25 years or so to go. Before. So in the budget message, we, um, We've laid out all the detail on the history of the contributions to this plan and how it's grown over time. Um, we are recommending that in this budget that the contribution, well, actually the actuarial recommendation here is that the contribution 
uh, requirement is going from 13.9% to 14.2% of compensation. So what the contributions for 2021 are proposed as 8.4% city and adding that to the 5.4% employee, it's uh, below the total required contribution of 14.2%. And so now the health benefit funds. Um, so uh, the, the council com communication does have some information on it that is uh, explaining how we budget for employee benefits each year for the health benefit fund. The health so uh, in the 2021 proposed budget, our health benefits are based on a negotiated cost with K Kaiser of 7.11% uh, increase for 21. So the CIP, um, it's a planning document that shows all the infrastructure needs of the city over the next five years. So our 21 to 25 proposed CIP is a total of 200 and almost $244 million over five years. Uh, only the first year, 2021, will actually be appropriated, although the council does act to adopt the whole CIP. The other four. This here is showing the amount of the funded CIP P projects uh, by year. So this is the breakdown of 2021, the first year of the CIP. And this is also by project category. Uh, I'm going to turn this next over to Jeff Friesner to pick it up from the next slide forward. First project is improvements at the Callahan House. If uh, next uh, project is the uh, Firehouse Arts Center facility improvements, as you're aware, this is a city owned uh, facility on 4th uh, that the Firehouse Arts uh, uh, Center uses. Uh, the next uh, project is the museum entry uh, concrete replacement. Uh, uh, the next uh, project is replacement of the concrete at the Roosevelt Pavilion. Uh, so you can see with the 2021 overview, it's approximately 11.2 million. Uh, so one of the one of the um, activities is the electric system up, uh, the electric substation upgrades. Um, I grouped these together because realistically these are a trio of projects that work together, and they're very integral to part of our uh, goal, our this decade's goal of 100% renewable energy. So it's and so advanced metering. So this is a multi-year project. Uh, council actually last year uh, approved uh, the rate changes to support this project. Uh, another one that we have in there is electric vehicle charging stations. We have several charging stations available out there to the public. Uh, we recently completed one at the library. We have um, another one out at the museum and serving sort of the museum and and the uh, facilities out there, and then also another one at the service center. Uh, we okay, I think it is my turn. So good evening, Mayor Bagley and members of council. Valerie Dodd, the executive director of Next Light. I have one slide and one slide only. Um, so if someone will please jump to it, um, I'll skip through that. And then I'm hoping to come back in the next few weeks so that I can provide a more thorough and broad overview of the operations. Um, so I think there've been some one, questions. Good evening, about Mayor Bagley and members of council. My name is Sharice Montgomery, and it's my pleasure to be joining you tonight as staff. I'm We've got four uh, bond projects underway. Phase one of the Civic Center Rehabilitation Project was the stabilization of the finance parking garage, and that work is complete. The garage was... Recreation actually has five bond projects. Um, first, the U Creek Golf Course Maintenance Facility Project Okay, so I'm back on again. Carrie Sheehan, Senior Project Manager, of Facilities and Maintenance Services. I am working with Scott, Assistant Chief Scott Snyder on the two fire station replacements. So of the approximate $9.3 million in bond funds, we've got $7.6 million allocated to the design build services. So wrapping up the uh, rest of the presentation, we want to go over some public works and natural resources uh, projects. Uh, we've broken them out uh, into basically five main categories, uh, starting with drainage, um, parks and open space and trails, or sewer wastewater, transportation, and water projects. Uh, we bring in 
bringing to the table about $63 million worth of capital improvement projects for next year. Next. Uh, first item real quick is just to, to go over a, a kind of the drainage project summary. Uh, so shifting over to our, our parks, open space and trail projects, uh, we have about $4 million programmed with not over nine projects. So one of the projects that we'll be working on, actually currently working on with some design this year into construction next year uh, is a, uh, the uh, next section of the St. Vrain Greenway. Uh, this is falling under our asset management uh, component in parks and natural resources is the park infrastructure rehabilitation replacement. We're focusing on Lou Miller Park next year. Shifting over to sewer, um, about four and a half million under six projects. Uh, the key project I want to focus on tonight is our wastewater treatment plant, Reg 85 improvements. So over at the sewer plant, uh, one of the challenges um, and, and across the board for a, a lot of our uh, areas that are regulated by the state is when they impose new state regulations. Uh, and this, so in our transportation, uh, we have some key projects that overlap into other areas. Um, the, uh, we're bringing about $16 million in next year. Um, TRP 11, our transportation system management um, CIP, uh, covers a multitude of areas, our safety, multimodal, and, and some minor capacity. We usually see it at intersection improvements. Section. Um, this is uh, tied in with our uh, quiet zone project as we're trying to get a, a crossing over uh, BNSF railroad tracks. Uh, that brings us to railroad quiet zones. Um, we have been working on design as per direction uh, from city council. Uh, we were anticipating going to construction by the end of this year. Uh, that has gotten pushed into next year uh, in major part because we did receive an FRA grant. Uh, so one of the projects that's tied pretty closely with uh, our Resilient St. Verain project is the Boston Avenue Bridge over St. Verain, TRP 118. Uh, we have been working on design with construction in 2021. Uh, so in closing out, um, we want to go over some of the water projects, uh, which is uh, probably the biggest um, investment we have, $37 million next year. So under water supply, uh, we are gonna be working on the, um, our supply pipelines uh, up around Lyons. Um, so uh, Price Park tank replacement, um, original um, open water storage reservoirs uh, in the black and white photo on the right. I wanted to see, uh, real quick, give you an overview of the Nelson Flanders water treatment plant expansion. Uh, that is also um, funding proposed through the bond election. Uh, design, we're doing a design build on it. It's currently design is underway. All right, let's move on to council council comments. Anybody? That's awesome. Good. Harold? Sure, I move to adjourn. I'll second that. All right, all, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, have a good night, guys. Aye.